Hello everyone, Ron here from RJJ's Reactions and back with 21 Pilots. Uh, the next track is Neon Gravestones and so we're just working through them. We're doing them in order. I know that uh, someone named Deltron, I'm, not, I'm thinking that's just a screen name, uh, gave me lots of information about uh, this particular album and 21 pilot so thank you very much for that and other people too have sent along information um, when I have time I read through everything and uh, with my uh, poor memory these days that it, it disappears almost as fast as I read it but I'll reread them uh, from time to time so if I get things wrong I do apologize for that but I, I try but I'm covering a lot of different musicians too uh, but really love 21 Pilots, um, getting right into it. So let's have a listen to Neon Gravestones, and then uh, we will look at the lyrics later because Tyler writes all of the lyrics, of course. So let's have a listen. I don't. This is the official audio uh, video, so probably not too much to look at here, but let's have a look. Or let's have a listen. <laughs> Beethoven introduction. What's my problem? Well, I want you to follow me down to the bottom underneath the insane asylum. Keep your wits about you why you got them. Cause your wits are first to go while you're problem solving. And my problem We glorify those even more when they. My opinion, our culture can treat a loss like it's a win. And right before we turn on them, we give them the highest of praise and hang the banner from a ceiling. Communicating further and graving an earlier grave is an optional way. No. The young graves don't try to call. musically in the background although I'm not quite sure how to explain it and then the intro with uh, a little bit of a um, uh, Beethoven piano going on there Beethoven one of my favorite uh, classical musicians along with Mozart and Bach and Rachmaninoff and people of that nature um, and it brings to mind because I was looking at Glenn Gould for Canada Day, one of the many Canada Day videos that I put up, and, and he's known for Bach and Beethoven, a uh, great Canadian uh, pianist. And then Tyler's voice uh, is a very different uh, uh, sound here, uh, but of course it's mostly telling a bit of a story, a kind of a slower rap story I guess you could call that uh, very interesting not quite sure where it's going yet but uh, sounds quite dark and calling for my bones uh, yeah I'm not I'm not quite sure but we're going to look at the lyrics separately later I, I do like what's what's happening uh, this video trying to hypnotize me here <laughs> my problem don't get it twisted it's with the people we praise who may have assisted i could use the streams and extra conversations i could give up and boost up my reputation i could go out with a bang they would know my name they would host and post a celebration my opinion will not be lenient my opinion it's real convenient our words are loud but now i'm talking action we don't get enough love will they get a fraction they say how could he go if he's got everything i'll mourn for a kid but won't cry for a king the young grace don't try to call. The young grace don't try to call for my bones. Call, call, call. Promise me this. If I lose to myself, you won't mourn a day. And you move on to someone else. Promise me this. If I lose to myself, you won't mourn a day. And you move on to someone else. Yeah, okay. Um, 
Wow, that was a hard-hitting line, a couple of lines there. I kind of got the feeling he was talking about suicide, and also from the notes I was sent uh, about uh, the lore, about Dima and, and sort of them promoting suicide in a way. And of course, Tyler trying to help people to not commit suicide in many of his songs and lyrics, and then saying, you know, if I lose to myself, don't mourn a day. Well, that's not going to happen. If he did lose to himself, which I think he won't at this point, but um, I'm sure a lot of people would be mourning, including myself, uh, despite the fact that I understand what he's saying and I and I get it. I mean, when I die, I don't want anyone to... I've always said, just shove me off and let some wild animals get some nourishment or something, you know, and I know that's, that's silly. People can't do that, but, but I... I think for yourself, you don't want other people to be sad. You don't want other people to be hurt. And uh, yeah, I believe he's talking here about people who, famous people who take their own lives and neon gravestones. It makes sense. The neon makes sense now if you're talking about some of the famous uh, singers, but other people too. Robin Williams comes to mind. But I'll talk more specifically about the lyrics when we get to the lyrics. I'll back that up even though in a way I almost don't want to hear those lines again because they hit me so so hard. Um, yeah, having had experience with losing a friend and close myself, it, it, it's tough, it's hard. All right, let's go back. Promise me this, if I lose to myself, you won't mourn a day. And you move on to someone else Promise me this If I lose to myself You won't mourn a day And you move on to someone else and awareness is beating a stigma that no longer scares us but for sake of discussion and spirit of fairness could we give this some room for a new point of view and could it be true that some could be tempted to use this mistake as a form of aggression a form of succession a form of a weapon thinking i'll teach them while well, i'm refusing the lesson it won't resonate in our minds I'm not disrespecting what was left behind Just pleading that it does not get glorified Maybe we swap out what it is that we hold so high Find your grandparents or someone of age Pay some respects for the path that they paved To life they were dedicated Now that should be celebrated mm. Okay, I believe we've reached the end All these other things are popping up here uh, very good. Yes, did jumpsuit. That was the first one from from this album. Um, excellent song, dark song in a way. Although there was, you know, there's some uh, positive messaging at the end. I think uh, we'll look at the lyrics specifically in a moment. The a very different uh, song. They, they they like to do things differently in each of their videos and songs. Uh, some things you recognize, obviously Tyler's voice, and some of the others it's Josh's drumming, and this one not so much, but uh, musically uh, I loved it, but I think the message was the, the more important, and then, and then that amazing voice of Tyler's, whatever it is about that voice that attracts people, including myself. Yeah, I, I really liked it and um, disliked it <laughs> in some ways because it's so hard hitting. It just it just really is. All right, let's have a look at the lyrics now. Neon Gravestones by 21 Pilots. The songwriter is Tyler Joseph, of course. Uh, call, call, call. What's my problem? Well, I want you to follow me down to the bottom underneath the insane asylum. <laughs> so in your, in your head, I think, keep your wits about you while you got them because your wits are first to go while you're problem solving. And my problem? So yes, uh, when you're problem solving, I think when you're 
when you're in, tr in trouble, sort of psychologically, mentally, whatever, uh, when you're stressed, when you're anxious, uh, your wits leave you. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> it's like, what's my name? Uh, it, yeah, it makes it very difficult. And that's why people, I think, get caught in a, in a trap and kind of a downward spiral because you, you, it's like swimming against the tide or against the current. Um, it's not impossible, but it's very difficult uh, to find your way out. And uh, your wits, they're, they're just not there. And, pe and, and other people sometimes don't understand because they're trying to explain to you or they're trying to show you, you know, that they're still uh, good and, uh, you know, go in this direction. And, and you just, you can't get there at that moment. At that moment, you're, you're not able to do that. You're not able to problem solve. You're not able to find an escape. We glorify those even more when they, and then he stops. He doesn't, doesn't, uh, you know, you got an ellipsis there, so he doesn't continue on. But we get it from the other lyrics that they kill themselves, they commit suicide. My opinion, our culture can treat a loss like it's a win, and right before we turn on them, we give them the highest of praise and hang their banner from a ceiling. Communicating further engraving an earlier grave is an optional way, no. So he's rejecting that. He's rejecting the idea of uh, glorifying, I think, what happens. And it does happen quite a lot. I think of past singers, but I also think of Robin Williams, who still shocks me because he seems so happy and he was a comedian. And but I knew that he had some issues. He had talked openly about some of the addiction issues and other problems that he had. But it still comes as a bit of a surprise and then other singers that are glorified you know and and uh, almost put up on a pedestal after they have committed suicide it's like where were you uh, before that so yeah that that's a problem glorifying this this idea and you're supposed to be dead by what 26 27 what was it the I can't remember the exact number, but it was something like that, the 26 Club or the 27 Club. Uh, nonsense. It's, these are people's lives. These are not objects. Um, they're real people, uh, just like everyone else. Neon gravestones try to call. Neon gravestones try to call uh, for my bones. Call, call, call. What's my problem? Don't get it twisted. So don't take me the wrong way. It's with the people we praise who may have assisted I could use the streams and extra conversations. I could give up and boost up my reputation. I could go out with a bang. They would know my name. They would host and post a celebration. Yeah. So if he, if he committed suicide, go out with a bang. Of course, that's that's one particular method of committing suicide. <laughs> you know, if he sh shoots himself, um, he'd get lots of streams and extra conversations. Everything would blow up for a while. It doesn't last. Um, but yeah, you'd be really, really popular for a while. Everybody would be playing your music over and over and talking about you and how amazing you were and everything else. Uh, but you're gone. That's the end. So in a way, um, I could use the streams and extra conversation, but you couldn't because once you're dead, <laughs> that's it. You're gone. Um, now, he may believe that he's going to heaven, but good luck with that. It's not going to do you any good either either way. Um so, yes, your reputation will be boosted, but what's the point? Your life is over. My opinion will not be lenient. My opinion, it's real convenient. Our words are loud, but now I'm talking action. We don't get enough love. Well, they get a fraction. They say, how could he go if he's got everything? I'll mourn for a kid, but won't cry for a king. So, yeah, we're, we're very sad about, uh, obviously, you're sad when a, when a child dies. Uh, in any way, you know, uh, we, we always look to the future in our children. So, but um, we don't sometimes have the compassion for a famous person or a wealthy person who seems to have everything and, but is struggling and, and in depression and anxiety. And sometimes people say, oh, boo-hoo, I don't really feel sorry for that person. Um, well, you should because it's a real person, <laughs> and and I get it because sometimes when someone has millions of dollars and and we don't, or at least I don't, I'm assuming some of you don't have millions or billions. It's hard to feel 
too sorry for them. <laughs> but on the other hand, <clears throat> you have to take a step back from that and recognize this is a real person, uh, you know, got heart, blood, liver, brain. It's just the same thing we are. And I don't know what he or she is dealing with. I can't know that, whether you're poor or wealthy or somewhere in between. I don't know the other things that you're dealing with un unless you tell me. And even then, I only know what you tell me. So everyone has something. Everyone has trauma in their life. Everyone has difficulties. And money doesn't always buy you out of it. It's nice to have some <laughs> so that you, you know, it does, it does help, but it doesn't help with everything. And it doesn't stop you from, obviously, from committing suicide. We've seen many famous people do that. Um, and sometimes they blame it on the fame. And I, <coughs> I often wonder whether it really has anything much to do with that at all. I think sometimes it does not. Because I think that if you have issues, you have issues. And, and then the fame and the money, I don't know. I guess it could make it worse. But I don't know. I, I just wonder whether that really ma makes as much of a difference as we say it does. It's, it's just the person and the, and the psychology. Promise me this, this one kills me, if I lose my to myself, I probably shouldn't have used that word and kills me, but <laughs> promise me this, if I lose to myself, you won't mourn a day and you'll move on to someone else. Uh, very difficult to do that if you really uh, love a person, if it's your friend or your family or somebody you really know in person, but even for famous people, I remember being enormously upset. Now, I wouldn't probably be as much now because I'm older and have experienced lots of death uh, in person and by extension that, that I hadn't done before, but when John Lennon was shot, it just hit me really hard. Um, and I didn't know him as a person, you know, I mean, I knew him as a famous person, but I didn't know him, know him. <laughs> uh, it, it, it would still really hurt if, if Tyler did lose to himself um, because I just appreciate him so much and love his music. And I think he seems like a really nice person and it would, it would really hit even though I don't know him personally. Uh, so that's a tough one and it's very difficult to just move on to somebody else. But I do understand the sentiment. He doesn't want people to be upset and especially if he loses to himself because he doesn't want to glorify that. He doesn't want that to be something uh, that other people look to and say, well, he did it, so now that gives me permission to do it as well. He doesn't want that at all. Um, neon gravestones try to call for my bones, but they won't get them. No, they won't get them. Uh, so that's the positive side. They're not going to get them. Don't get me wrong, the rise in awareness is beating a stigma that no longer scares us. But for sake of discussion and spirit of fairness, could we give this some room for a new point of view? Sure. Depression, anxiety, uh, you know, psychological issues, uh, whatever you want to call them. We talk more about them now than ever and there's, there's more awareness. There's also more ways of approaching it, different medications, uh, counseling, all of these things. So at least it isn't a stigma that everyone hides under the carpet, you know, and, and doesn't talk about. So that's a good thing. It's a good, th good thing that we're opening up and able to talk about it and try to aim for uh, making things better. But uh, he's saying, could we give this some room for a new point of view? And could it be true that some could be tempted to use this mistake as a form of aggression, a form of succession, a form of a weapon? thinking, I'll teach them while I'm refusing the lesson. It won't resonate in our minds. Um, yes, I exactly. Sometimes people use the threat, at least, of suicide as a form of aggression. Um, and then sometimes they actually do it, thinking we'll get back at them. We'll, I'll show them. But of course you won't, because you'll be gone. <laughs> so, so, and, and, it, and it doesn't work anyway. I mean, after a little while, people forget. Now, famous people hang around a little bit longer, but you know what? In a decade, in two decades, three decades, it's pretty much gone. A lot of the young people, uh, most of my young students that I have, well, I have all ages, mind you, I have older ones too, but the young ones, they don't even know the names of most of the people who have committed suicide that were so famous at the time. And uh, they don't even know who these people are. So it's, it's not going to 
it's not going to teach them long term at any rate. I'm not disrespecting what was left behind. So he's not disrespecting the people who've gone. He understands the, the pain that they were probably in and, and, and what has happened. Just pleading that it does not get glorified. Yeah, they're real people. Maybe we swap out what it is that we hold so high. Find your grandparents or someone of age. Pay some respects for the path that they paved to life they were dedicated. Now that should be celebrated. So... Um, I know that Tyler and Josh too, I think, have a great respect for their families. I know some of them are in the videos. And uh, <clears throat> so he's saying, look at people who have, they don't have to be your grandparents, just old, older people, people who've been around for a while, who are still here and who continue to live. I mean, maybe they're gone, but they live to an old age. <laughs> and, you know, shouldn't we respect that more than someone, you know, in their 20s or whatever? Uh, who is famous and, and then decides to end it. Uh, why are we respecting something like that? Someone who didn't continue, who didn't struggle through and succeed and beat the demons. Uh, we respect that, but we don't respect the ones who did. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think that's a really strong message, powerful message. And and uh, I, I think it's true, but I don't think it will... Um, I don't think it will have the effect that he would like it to have and, and I think I would like it to have because I think that we, our, our own psychologies, we are automatically more drawn to the dramatic, right? And living on and, and just struggling through and making a life for yourself and not being famous and not being rich or whatever is not nearly as attractive or as, uh, you know, it, it just automatically resonates with us, doesn't it, when we hear something. And that's why the news is filled with just drama. And we don't usually hear the good things. We don't usually hear of somebody who's, you know, managed to overcome the mundane. <laughs> so it always has to be something more exceptional that hits the news. Once in a while, you'll hear a story about, you know, someone who's 102 and you know, how did they get to be that age, you know, but it's a brief blip in all the drama and excitement and, you know, things that we're glorifying and we probably shouldn't be glorifying. Really excellent lyrics, wonderful, wonderful lyrics, very important topic. Uh, I agree with what he's saying that we, we do need to look at not only, uh, and, and he's not saying to disrespect those people who have who've done that. In fact, I think it's quite the opposite. He's saying, look at them as humans. Look at them as people. They're real people. They're not just famous people. I think I think once someone gets fame, that it, it becomes, um, I don't know if my screen went blank there. My screen went blank for me. I'm not sure if it will in the recording. I apologize for that if it did. Uh, I'm talking too long. That's the problem. Uh, just because someone gets fame, it doesn't mean they're not a person anymore. And we sometimes don't respect them as people. We see them as almost a separate entity, as if there's something else and they've lost their humanity. He's saying, no, they're, they're human. Respect that and understand that they had these real problems and we should have empathy for that. But don't glorify the, the fame, the money, and the suicide. Like, that's not the thing that we should be glorifying. All right, I'm going to stop talking because I think I'm starting to ramble like I do sometimes. Uh, Neon Gravestones, great title, great song. Didn't know what Neon Gravestones, uh, although I had a bit of a clue from, as I say, Deltron sent me a lot of information about the lore uh, as well, about Dima sort of encouraging people to commit suicide. And, and then, of course, Tyler often talks about real life situations. And then the lore is sort of connected to that, I guess. Um, so it, it's 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 incredibly interesting and i do thank everyone who has sent me information about uh 21 pilots uh, and other groups and singers as well and about the lore as well as as uh, tyler and and josh i almost said tyler and joseph i keep mixing it up because it's tyler joseph joseph and josh done so i get the joseph and josh mixed up sometimes but even though i do know but yeah. Anyways, it's Ron from RJJ's Reactions. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Click that little button and like the video if you do. I hope you do. 
Uh, we'll be moving on with 21 Pilots, but let me know who else you would like me to react to. In the meantime, keep listening, keep having fun. Bye-bye for now.